<laughs> Hello, denizens of the internet. Today I have a very special guest, Rick Green, a uh, member of the Frantics Comedy Group. So we are we are one half. The two of us represent one half of the. We're comedy. Fran, <laughs> but we don't have the ticks. The ticks are not. The, here. the ticks are not here. So I apologize. But we're not here to talk about the Frantics. I know uh, many of you have uh, discovered the Frantics when I mentioned Doctor Demento and uh, boot yeah. to the head and you would you responded in your comments wait a second i, I actually know you uh, we're a lot older and grayer than no. what we were back then but today i want to more I brought, in denial about it one, one of the things that you don't know about rick uh he was a pioneer along with the producer mark asquith on a show called prisoners of gravity that was the first show i think ever that covered popular culture through comic books and fantasy and things like that so you were really early in on the the yeah. game and well, it's just it's just amazing so this is what we're going to talk about uh i want to find out about your interviews with the people who have now become extremely famous like uh, george r r martin people like that yeah well when we started so it was it would have been 1989 uh it was groundbreaking it was at tv ontario which is the pbs of the province of ontario and uh, Mark had gone in and talked to Daniel Richler, whose father is Mordecai Richler, who is a famous author, and about the idea of doing a comic book show. And um, Mark had worked in the comic field and basically... He had a store. He had the it's, Silver Snail. Yeah, he didn't own it, but he was okay. he made it work. And he did everything. That was a fantastic comic book store. It was my I favorite it, comic book it store. It may still be a going. Uh, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. So Mark, uh, they had this idea, but Mark didn't want to be on camera. And I happened to be in at TVO... Uh, with a couple of ideas for kids' shows and one for a science show, and they said... And none of these shows involved drag queens at the time. No, not, not then. No. <laughs> is, not on very, camera. It wasn't very progressive, uh, not like now. So, yeah, so we... Uh, so they called me and said, would you be willing to come in and audition? I have a fellow here named Mark Asquith. I said, I... I play ball hockey with Mark Asquith every Sunday, right? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah I was yeah, there. I remember. So anyway. <laughs> I so, played ball okay. hockey with you. I was yeah, in net. I, I was in net. Yeah, you were a good goalie, too. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then, so I went in with this idea. I, I can't just sit there in front of a bunch of books and talk about comics and science fiction fantasy as like it's some... Uh, uh, deep, a educational deep, channel yeah, thing, yeah. Even yeah. though it's an educational network. So I came up <laughs> with the idea of Commander Rick. He's up in space. He tried to flee the planet Earth because it's going to hell in a handbasket. But his car, rocket-powered Chevy, crashed into a space satellite, a uh, communication satellite. So he's hijacking the airwaves to talk about the important issues, uh, environment and violence and sexism and racism and all of the rest of it. We're going to talk about these things with the only people who have solutions and have some imagination. That's fantasy, speculative fiction, comic book, all these people. Science, are science fiction authors. Yeah, so it was. And, and your intro was done by Ty uh, Templeton. Yep. So uh, who's one of my favorite comic book uh, he's artists. Fabulous. And it's a fabulous intro. Yeah. Oh my God, that was a good intro. Yeah, so the first season was really problematic. We had. Why? Uh, uh, just behind the scenes, there was some. Um, Somebody who didn't understand. I don't want okay. to get into it. it was okay. just, but it was a lost season. I don't think anyone will see them. I don't even know if those tapes exist anymore, which is a shame. But then the second season, we got an editor, producer, uh, Greg Thurlbeck, who came from Much Music, from uh, that background. And he instantly got what we were trying to do. The opening got cut together beautifully. And we came up with every week we were trying to explore a theme, which is what I really wanted to do was, you know, this week we're going to talk about violence would be a simple one. But eventually we got into things like cover art. We got into um, uh, the city, uh, the city at night or whatever. We had these interesting themes that would span horror, speculative fiction or fantasy fiction, science fiction, comic books. And so you could have all these different people. And so what we did, we went out and interviewed uh, at conventions, at conferences, we'd sit down one author, artist, whatever, after another. And it's one weekend in New York at a science fiction convention, I guess it was for one of the awards, uh, we, we interviewed, I think, 60 people in wow. three days. We had two cameras going. There were four of us doing the interviews. We were rotating. We came back with all a ton of footage. And then what we would do is, so we interviewed Stan Lee, we interviewed Jack Kirby when he was still alive, uh, we interviewed 
uh, it was hard to interview him after he wasn't alive. But uh, <laughs> like all of these legends from back then, Todd McFarlane, who was hot, and uh, the guy, you know one of the guys, uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle guys, and um, and then you know all of the people who were doing the superhero stuff and really interesting stuff, Mobius from Europe, and uh, in the who, who designed book, the alien. Uh, yeah. And aliens. Did he? Yeah. yeah yes, that's, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we came back with all this footage. But what would happen is we'd put together a show on the city and you'd have a minute and a half of Stan Lee. And then it would go to, uh, you know, William Gibson talking about cyberpunk. And then it would go to uh, some pop through all these people to deal with the theme. The fans were outraged. Oh, my God. You had Stan Lee and you only talked to him for 30 seconds? No, no, wait, wait, wait. Interesting, okay. Because we also, cause, and we went in before we went to any of the conferences. We had a long list of topics. So we were, you know, and it meant everybody was reading. The thing that eventually happened was I was doing writing and hosting Prisoners of Gravity. And I was also writing, co-writing, co directing, and performing in the Red Green Red show. Red Green, right, with Steve so, Smith. So once a year, I did, uh, I think I did 52 or 56 episodes of television. Of something. Yeah, of something. <laughs> it was just, and so they were doing most of the interviews. They were going to the conferences. And, and Mark, to this day, knows everybody in comic books uh, and in that whole graphic novel But, but world. getting back to that other thing that you uh, mentioned that the fans were angry about, but they were happy to get Stan Lee multiple times oh, throughout yeah. the year. Once, once people got it, they were... Because uh, I would rather see that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't want to see Stan Lee once, and then I'm done with him. It yeah, would be... for five minutes or 20 minutes. Right. What's interesting is that the people who got interviewed, the, the people who were interviewed, especially these science fiction authors, but everybody wanted to be interviewed by us and became our champions because I remember, I've forgotten who it was, but one of the conferences... Uh, somebody was, well, I don't know if I'll do the interview. They, we had approached them. I think Mark approached them. And another author came over and tapped and said, no, oh, do it. They get your stuff. They've read your work. They know what they're right. doing. And they're, oh, okay. And they so they became the evangelists. And everywhere we went, people were willing to talk with us. Because, and, well, you were the very first. I mean, you talked with Harlan Ellison, who's a hero yeah, of mine. I, I hang on. We, have, we have a list of people. So uh, can you tell me whether these people were nice or not? <laughs> Harlan Ellison was great. Harlan was great, Ellison yes. is a... Fierce. Yeah. Uh, he's a. He's got a bit of you in him. Uh, oh, okay. or you have a bit of him in him. Except he had more of a lady killer than I did. Yeah. He, he, he. The girls have flocked. Ray Bradbury, Stan Lee, Nichelle Nichols. Who, I never who, heard of her. Nichelle Nichols <laughs> serenaded me. Wow. I said, I'm up here. She was in one half of the studio. I'm on the set, apparently up in space. I'm lonely up here. Could you? And she. She was doing a one woman show where she was doing all of the great black singers and soul singers. And blues singers, she, what a voice. And she serenaded me. Just hair went up in the back of the neck. Wow. Ursula K. Le Guin. Michael, wow. Michael wow. Moorcock. Brian Aldis. Alan Moore. Frank Miller. Anne Rice. Larry Niven. Clive Barker. Wow. Douglas Adams. William Gibson. Jack Kirby. Bob Kane from Batman Mobius. Guy Gabriel Kay, who is still writing. Michael Dorn. David Cronenberg. Todd McFarlane. Neil Peart. Uh, Roberta Bondar, the, uh, right. she actually apparently wore one of our t-shirts. She's the Canadian astronaut. Yeah, and she uh, went up on the shuttle. Apparently, she took along one of our t-shirts. Somebody said so. Uh, yeah, Timothy Leary, uh, Michael Dorn, Matt Groening. Wow. So, so I'm Rushdie, Terry Pratchett uh, from uh, Good Omen. So and this, I think there were 500 or 600 interviews that we did. And, and how many total shows, apart from the aborted season one? There's like 110, something like that, somewhere uh, between 100 and 150. Now, TVO has not officially re-released any of these shows. They, they can't for legal reasons. because. But of, they're kind of available on YouTube if yeah, you Yeah, if you so search. I'm hoping to actually in the next few months over the winter get some more up there for people to see. And they're fantastic. They're, they, they are. Absolutely groundbreaking show that and you I had and Mark no put idea. together. I had no idea. Well, and Greg and Shirley, who was, Shirley Brady was awesome. So they were, they were so dedicated. What, here's what's interesting. So we do this show about all of the specific kind of outcast, underdog, uh, di disrespected genres. Meanwhile, TVO had a show called... Uh, not second reading, imprint. Imprint, and, right. And they would interview Margaret Atwood, although we'd sent along three questions. So we got some Margaret Atwood talking about Handmaid's Tale, obviously. Yeah, she's so, a science fiction writer. Yeah, she is. So we got, we had 
we were competing at this one hour show that had a huge budget. We had a tiny budget <laughs> and, and we beat them in the ratings. Right. Because, and it was the really, this was before the internet, obviously, but this was the first hint about narrow casting instead of broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm a, a big fan of P.D. James murders, I'm not that interested in hearing an episode, a show that's about Salman Rushdie and, uh, and somebody else, uh, you know, it, it, people who are not of my genre. So, but we were, uh, the number of emails that we got and, and letters back then, it was all letters saying, you know, I live, a I live in a small town. I thought I was the only person who had heard of these people who understood, you know, Mao's, uh, what's his name, a thing about the Holocaust. Oh, right, right, right. The guy who did the cartoon yeah, series cartoon. of Mouse. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying I, to remember. Uh, like that was... Uh, Siegel, Joe Spiegel. 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 Yeah. Spiegel. Yeah. yeah. So Spiegelman. 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 That's it. Thank you. And yeah, yeah, six hundred fifty. Yeah. You know. So they were doing the interviews, and then they came together. They put it in a in a script. They gave me all of the quotes and suggestions, and said, "Can you link this to link that to link this to?" So then I would take it away and come up with a way of interacting. And then all these layers are connecting it all together into a, a coherent piece that was funny, that was informative, that assumed you'd heard of these people. So that phrasing had, was really different writing mm -hmm. from comedy because, well, it was a bit like sketch comedy because you had to be really compact. You had to introduce all your characters in four lines and so on. So it was, you know, you would have to not only mention why Jack Kirby was important, but you know, what he'd done. So you're education, educating people who potentially had no idea who Jack Kirby was. Or you were reaching people who knew everything about Jack Kirby and loved him. Right. And so, you know, I mean, it started with Star Trek, but long before that, people were adamant and they were, they wanted it done right. And the first season, it wasn't done right. In the second, third, fourth, and fifth seasons, we nailed it. And it, it got so good. And, and one of the things that I loved, this was a sign that we were, people were doing what we loved. You know, the, the slate that goes on uh, before the, when the tape is made up, they put a slate with the title, Prisoners of Gravity, episode 27, right, 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 right. The City. Well, the editor, Brian, uh, Brian Karn, I think was his name, and Greg would, it, on their lunch hour, when they're supposed to go off and get a break, they'd sit there and create on really primitive software back then, they'd create a skyline of the city whatever it was, mm -hmm. so that every, and nobody saw it except the tape loader, but they spent wow. how, they spent an hour or more creating, a, a, I don't know how they were manipulating then. It was not like, there were none of the tools available back then. And then there were layers on top of that. So I had a computer that could throw up graphics and could, the, it was a Nano Cyber 3000, which Ooh. I shortened to, <laughs> to Nancy. So Nancy would heckle me. Uh, would come on and, and do stuff. So, so, so tell, tell us quickly some of the highlights of the, the people. I mean, the people that we still know now who are active, uh, uh, Jack Kirby isn't obviously, Jack, but I mean, J.R.R. Martin. George, so George Martin was- um, What was he like? A nice guy, had a hilarious story about um, a writer. I, th I think he did this to another writer where the writer said, uh, said uh, the story drags here. And he said, add a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> People love dragon. So they wrote a theme where they're on this boat and they're drifting through and suddenly a dragon goes by and never referred to again. But <laughs> the other writer thought it was here. Had a dragon and did. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he, back then he was... He was not known. Yeah, of but, course. And there, you know, out of 650 people, there's probably 120 who are familiar names. And I've listed a and, lot and, of them. And Alan, um, Alan Moore. Moore. So Alan Moore, they met in England. Uh, they were over there for one of the conferences. And we had Sally, our uh, production assistant, was there. To, she keep, records all the footage as, we're, as it's being done and making notes about what was discussed at each point. And Alan Moore comes in, and he's the shaggy. He's still shaggy. Was shaggy back then. Yeah, okay. and he's huge. This big guy, and his T-shirt says "Say Yo to Drugs," <laughs> and he comes walk <laughs> shambling in, apparently. And he goes, what more? Huh? And Sally thought we're doomed. She was terrified. By the end of the interview with him, she was. I love him. I want to have his children. And sweet she, guy. Yeah. And she was 65 at the point. And had so, he written Watchmen by that time? Yeah, so he had written Watchmen, Dave Gibbons. We got the interview with him. Here's what's interesting. So Dave Gibbons, the artist, 
and Alan Moore, and then we had a bunch of other people, um, Charles Vess and others, I think, were in there commenting on why this was so groundbreaking, on why, like it talked about using the nine panels uh, and creating a sense of time through that, and then sometimes breaking that, and on and on. Now were references then to Mobius and all going way back. Um, What's interesting is Mark met the director of the Watchmen movie when he, because Mark Asquith later worked at Space and got to interview people for... Snyder. Uh, yeah, and so he was asking about it. Uh, Watchmen, he said, yeah, he said, you know, I didn't really get what, what it was or what it was about, and then I saw this program about it, and it really made it clear what the depth was. And Mark went, oh, was it a guy up in space? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so our program is it, so that the show became the clarified for the director. Oh, that's what why this is so powerful because he he liked comics but didn't get the depth of all of the hidden layers. So so um, Snyder would have done a crappy job if it wasn't for you and Prisoners. He might not have done, if it wasn't for Mark. He might not have done the movie. I don't now, know. Now now for some people that's actually. Uh, you know, might have been a, a good thing because it's a controversial movie. And, yeah. and is it Jack Snyder? What's uh, no, sir? What's his name? I can't remember his first Bob name. Smith. No, That's Jack it. Snyder. Anyway, yeah, he's uh, Ian part Wilson. of the Snyder verse. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so anyway. which I actually like the movie, but Alan Moore did not. No, well, Alan doesn't like anything. Anything. That's yeah, right. So <laughs> Alan, he's he's kind of renounced yes, comics. All, all, and all his uh, all the things that he sold. He's, he's renounced ownership to any of them because he yeah. doesn't like what the... It's funny because he thought everything was derivative, but he did uh, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, yeah. which was all of these famous literary characters. I, so uh, Alan's great. He's just, so so he's we have Camargue. Neil Gaiman is still in the game. Yeah, Neil and Neil credits uh, Mark and Toronto, where the comic book store was, and, and Prisoners of Gravity with m making his career because wow. that's where it started. That's where the mania started here. And we were the first to enter. We, we may not have been the first to interview him, but we did it right. Like, say you're a lesser known writer, Nancy Cress, and you live in, I don't know, I think she's in Minnesota. So you go to the local Minnesota station. Coming up, yeah, we have with us right. Nancy Kress, <laughs> who writes books about robots and space. And they've read yes. the book, and they think it's Do funny. you have any recipes? Yeah. Exactly. What's your favorite Where hamburger recipe? Where do you get recipe? your ideas? <laughs> then we sit down with, you know, and she sits down with whoever was doing the interview, Mark or, or, or Shirley or Greg. In this book, in that section, you, the authors would often... Oh, God, I don't remember. Give me a minute. They, got it. they had to think. I was supposed to sit down and interview Isaac Asimov, um, but he was in later stages, and he said to me, uh, he just said, I don't think I'll be any good. I'd rather not because my memory's gone. Mm. I, so, uh, and I just, much as it would have been wonderful to have him, I we kind of backed off. Ray so, so you didn't get as Isaac Asimov? No, That's no Ray Bradbury surely interviewed him, and Shirley's a sweetie. She's sitting there, and Ray's a bit of a flirt with her. <laughs> so Ray is going, so we tell the guests, you always, so you don't address me as, as Shirley. You would say, call me Rick. Well, he'd forget. <laughs> so, but what would happen is most of the interviews, it would be, you know, the people who were in on it who realized what we were doing right. were then, okay, yeah. Uh, so Rick, well, Rick, and so right. on. But he kept, well, Shirley, and then and things like, well, someone as cute as you. It's like, okay, we can't use that. It was well, like, you were pretty cute yeah, back I, then. I was. <laughs> and, <laughs> that would actually have been very good. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Ray, but I don't swing that way. <laughs> but I might. <laughs> if right. I wasn't in space. That's right, you know. When, when it this, is pretty lonely up here, by the way. Actually, I should tell you that, I don't know if you've heard this, but the very last episode we wanted to do was to have me, Commander, this has been great, and I'll be, and then there'd be like a light would come on as if a door had been open. Ricky, dinner's ready. <laughs> uh, anyway, the system, I, be, I better go. And that That's the, funny. Yeah. I don't think I remember. I've seen most of the no, those that, episodes. We never did that. Oh, but okay. that, Actually, it would have been better if you burned up in re-entry. Oh, yeah. The other <laughs> thing is, here's the other thing. We put in a fake opening. So, again, he was a pirate broadcaster. So we had this fake opening called Second Nature. Oh, well, yeah, that when the great. show debuted, people would turn it on. There was yeah, banjo it, music yeah, it, yeah. and then these shots of nature. And then I would stand up. Good evening. I'm so, I've forgotten the character's name even. But I would do the, this week's solar-powered nightlights. Plus, and, uh, and I'd do this kind of... And they thought they didn't get the station right. Yeah, and, and they then would turn about away. 45 seconds in, it yeah. would shh and go after I'd done a joke. And then we realized, 
okay, we can't do this. No, no, we got you, were, you were screwing people. Because people were too, because yeah. everybody, even back then, with this clip, what else is on? Oh, I thought it was going to be all my Prisoners friends. of Gravity, you, you screwed yourself. Yeah, exactly. We did so many things wrong. It was hilarious. Uh, but yeah, we. I, I, so the one interview that's interesting to me, the, my favorite thing is, is Mark Asquith, who is a legend and knows everybody in comics. Like at the office, people would call and say, Mark, I just got the inking job on uh, Superboy. What do I charge? They'd be asking, uh, who do I, he connect all these people. He was one of those people, it's like a maitre d' at a great restaurant, just knew everybody and what they were up to and still to this day loves all of that. And so he's going to interview Jack Kirby. So it's like you or I getting to interview uh, all of the Monty, Monty Pythons. Python, right. right. Yeah, sure. so they're all going to sit down and talk. So he's, but Jack, his wife had has said to Mark um, that Jack's not there anymore. Hmm. Said, I don't know what you'll get. And Mark thought, if I can, we'll sit for a half hour, 20 minutes, and if I can get a quote. So he sat down and Jack's there and they're making him up. And then Mark starts, he says, who was the, uh, is it the Hulk? Who was the Hulk based on? The Hulk was based on, and he started. Wow. He came out of he the He just fog. kicked in. His fog lifted. He just, he spoke. Mark asked question after question, and his wife, I think it's her name's Rose, is sitting off there. So Mark's, uh, you know, asking the questions, and there's one camera, because it's supposed to be me up in space, so there's one camera on Jack, and he's talking right to Mark, and off in the corner, Rose is just awestruck. And she starts crying. And Mark's trying not to cry. And, wow. he's asking, and Jack, and then Mark said at the end of it, thank you so much. Thank you. And, and he kind of, the, it faded away. But for that uh, thing, sorry. So, uh, yeah, so it was just, it was so powerful. And Mark, to this day, I, I will be moved almost to tears. Because, and so then Jack Kirby passed away within a year or two. Um, and the networks... You, the you had the footage. We had the only interview footage with Jack Kirby. It was it's a, like this legend, you know, it's like saying, well, there's one interview with John Lennon. This was the guy in that world who was, you know, Stan Lee people know about, but Jack Kirby, and Stan Lee was very good at self, uh, self-promotion and so right. on, but Jack Kirby... Oh, he, Marvel would not be no. It would not be Marvel without this Jack. This guy Kirby. and what a character! He's just a New York, little short New York, tough guy. It was so great. So we got these people talking um, about what they what mattered to them, and their you know speculative fiction is about imagining possibilities and and anticipating what could go wrong in the future, and then what the consequences could be or what the solutions might be. And so you had these people who are really educated, uh, well-spoken, the writers, right? And they, and when they saw their work was being respected, man, mm. they just, they couldn't, every time we saw them, they would come again and, or they would want to see us at a next conference. They'd you know, I'll do another So one, one of the interesting things about Prisoners of Gravity, and we'll wrap it up here, is that uh, both you and Mark were lovers of this genre. You did the show out of knowledge and respect. And what's ironic now is the holders of these pop culture properties, one of the things that we're always arguing about uh, on our YouTube channels is that they don't respect the past, they don't read it, they don't know it, no. they're making up new shit all the time, uh, they're adding characters that never existed, they're changing characters around that probably it doesn't help that they're changing them around for, for really no value except for, you know, the Novel intersectionalism. People. And, and, and um, uh, you know, I'm listening to you and I'm going, I want to see this show again. And I want to go back to that era that you uh, had this show in and, and be able to relive those individuals at the top of their game when they loved what they were doing. And we were loving consuming, we, we, we loved consuming the products that they were creating. And it seems that that part is gone. I'm glad you. I'm glad you came by. And yeah, this was a terrific uh, conversation. If you guys want uh, Rick and me to talk uh, more about history, no, about well, about uh, prisoners of gravity and his breasts, which he's showing now, his moobs, 
Uh, we figure girls. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get together again and maybe give us a list of individuals that maybe Rick can expand on further in terms gotta, of the... And you've got to have Mark on here too, because Mark will... Mark was there for a while. Is lot he still of, alive? Mark is still oh, alive. Okay, yeah, he's, uh, you know, if you can call that living. I hope he's not no. watching this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Good to see you, too. So long, denizens of the internet. Till, what is, what's my, I can't even remember my catchphrase. Oh, be seeing you. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even remember my ending catchphrase. I have that effect. Yeah, people. I know. Bye, folks.